What if the next long-range rocket barrage arrives shrink-wrapped like an Amazon delivery? At Fort Bragg, a plane shipping container pops open and inside 40 seconds spits the same guided rockets that Ukraine begs for out to 300 plus miles. No turret, no armor, just a gray box that could be sitting on any pier on Earth. That prototype is SOCOM's palletized field artillery launcher, and it just turned every cargo yard into a potential launch site. A nondescript gray container sits on a Fort Bragg test pad, doors yawning wide. Inside, two multiple launch rocket system pods on an electric lift, ready to spit guided rockets or an army tactical missile in 40 seconds. No camouflage net, no armored cab, just a freight box that blends with a million others. Special Operations Command quietly rolled this palletized field artillery launcher prototype into President Trump's June visit, letting cameras catch it only by accident. The message was blunt. Tomorrow's strike battery could hide on any pier, rail car, or ferry deck. The brochure promise is mobility through anonymity. Truck the box to a fishing port, chain it to the pier, fire, slip away. Satellites searching for telltale launcher silhouettes instead see rows of identical containers. U.S. Army Pacific's four-star calls it literal deterrence, a needle in a stack of needles that forces Beijing to wonder which crate holds teeth. But this visual invisibility masks an awkward caveat. The prototype cannot yet launch the new precision strike missile, the very round the Indo-Pacific fight may hinge on. SOCOM's engineers swear the fix is coming. Skeptics see a loophole big enough to sail a destroyer through. And if the launcher's outsized signature ever gets tagged, its plain vanilla walls give zero protection. So why push a system that looks bulletproof on PowerPoint, but hides lethal gaps in hardware and funding? Check the budget lines. The trail of disappearing dollars sketches a far stranger plot twist, one the Army never intended to write. Congress first saw a palletized field artillery launcher on a stray budget line called Project 688, $24.9 million in fiscal year 2021, then nothing but tumbleweeds. The paperwork admits no funding in fiscal year 2021 and labels PFL a one-off offshoot of the Strategic Capabilities Office's Strike X demo, tacked onto an aging sub-munition account to keep the lights on. Yet four summers later, a war zone camera catches the same launch box at Fort Bragg, now stamped Property of United States Special Operations Command. SOCOM will not say when or with whose money, it adopted the orphan, and its published ledgers carry zero mentions of PFL. Someone is writing checks from the shadows, and the launcher keeps breathing. Why the clandestine custody? A container that can ride a fishing trawler or rail flat car is catnip for commandos who slip in, strike, and fade. Regular army leaders still talk about range gaps and Indo-Pacific basing drama, but special operators want a silent partner that looks like cargo, not artillery. PFAL's low profile lets them park firepower, where treaties, host nation politics, or Chinese satellites say they should not. The irony, the only round PFAL cannot shoot today, is the headline-grabbing precision strike missile, because certification money evaporated with the Army's budget retreat. SOCOM's engineers claim a fix is coming, and a quiet test window opens in early 2026, if the stealth funding stream holds. But while they retrofit the Seeker, Lockheed Martin is pitching a far bolder variant a 24-tube monster that packs four times a HIMARS volley. Can the budget ghost keep haunting Capitol Hill long enough to field a magazine that big? Next up, massed rockets on a single pallet. 24 fins glint inside one steel frame. Lockheed Martin's newest palletized launcher packs a four HIMARS volley onto a single 10-wheel logistics vehicle system replacement truck. Unveiled at last November's Human Machine Integration Summit, the concept hoists two dozen 227-millimeter guided rockets but designers left room for bigger ordnance. Army tactical missile system, precision strike missile, even Patriot class interceptors. A lone driver can lower the box, fire in remote mode, and rumble off before counter battery radar finishes its first sweep. Firepower, however, drags pounds. The Bear LVSR chassis already scales more than 53,000 pounds. Add armored cab, launcher hardware, and a full rocket load, and you breach 70,000. That busts the C-130's 42,000-pound payload ceiling, meaning rapid moves now demand scarce C-17s or C-lift. Marines love the extra tubes. Logisticians see a fuel-guzzling whale that risks beachhead bottlenecks. The Army's own survivability analysts note a taller radar cross-section and bigger thermal plume than HIMARS. Mass salvos tempt enemy sensors unless the launcher keeps hopping. Lockheed says software-defined fuse and pre-packed reloads will cut dwell time to under eight minutes, yet Congress has not priced a single magazine refill kit. 
Pentagon bean counters whisper about a $4.5 million sticker just to reload once. A blunt reminder that volume fires torch budgets as fast as propellant. Still, every rocket quadruples the odds of saturation, and the Pacific War Game crowd salivates over islands that can cough 24 rocket storms. But raw volume only matters if the rounds can reach beyond the adversary's shore batteries. And that circles us straight to the Precision Strike Missile upgrade, now trapped in certification limbo. Precision Strike Missile is the round PFAL was born to hurl. Yet today, the container launcher can fire every multiple launch rocket system munition, except PRISM. Budget files admit the gap. They also vow to certify PFAL for PRISM once hardware tweaks clear design reviews. The clock just started. On July 2nd, the baseline missile hit Milestone C, green lighting full production at ranges beyond 400 kilometers. Army 2 pods now deliver four PRISMs from a HIMARS or AML. A PFAL box would double that salvo. But Army strategists want more than 310 miles. Increment 4, a 1,000-kilometer variant, entered competitive prototyping with a new capability by 2026. Mandate aimed squarely at Chinese anti-ship batteries. Real-world shots are closing the hype loop. Last summer, a Tennessee National Guard crew in Palau fired prisms from an autonomous multi-domain launcher and sank a moving hulk. Proof the seeker can chase ships and that pop-up launchers can ride island chains Washington barely controls. If p earns its PRISM badge, one fishing pier crate could threaten ports 600 miles away, and the Increment 4 upgrade would push that reach past Yokosuka. Allies cheer the math, diplomats wince at the escalation ladder, and satellites? They will soon scan harbors packed with identical boxes, unsure which holds a thousand kilometer sting. Next up, when every superpower hides rockets and freight yards, does stealth firepower deter or trigger the first nervous salvo? Every shipping crate just became a suspect. Three weeks ago, Chinese state media paraded the containerized sea defense combat system. Missiles tucked inside a standard 40-footer that can roll off a merchant pier and punch 250 nautical miles out. Analysts call it Beijing's Ghost Battery, a direct heir to Russia's Club K, but with a larger menu of munitions and a crew of four. Moscow wrote the playbook a decade ago. Now its export brochures boast caliber cruise missiles and KH-35 anti-ship rounds fired from innocuous boxes. Tehran took the hint. In February 2024, Iran lofted a ballistic missile from a drab container perched on a converted cargo ship, proving even regional powers can hide strategic teeth in global trade lanes. For reconnaissance satellites, the nightmare is scale. 12 billion square feet of containers move through ports each month. Algorithms flag shape, but not intent. The war zone notes adversaries would need to treat any crate as a launcher, overloading target decks, and pushing commanders toward preemptive strikes. Space-based infrared sensors help only after the lid lifts. By then, rockets arc skyward. Washington is attacking the ambiguity with pattern of life trackers and hyperspectral CubeSats that sniff fresh propellant traces. Yet even prototype AI pipelines yield minutes, not hours, of warning. And container fleets refresh faster than watch lists. The Navy's Maritime Domain Awareness Directorate bluntly warns, we cannot surveil every box. Which brings us back to PFL hide a 24-tube monster among fishing gear, and you sow the same uncertainty until its sheer weight slows the getaway. Next up, can pop-up salvos stay lethal if mobility starts to choke? Firepower loves mass. Mobility hates it. A combat-ready high-mobility artillery rocket system weighs just 35,800 pounds, light enough for a single C-130 hop into any dirt strip on the planet. Lockheed's 24-rocket pallet rides a Marine Corps logistics vehicle system replacement cargo truck. That alone tips 22.5 tons, about 45,000 pounds, before you bolt on launcher rails, armor kits, or fuel. A C-130 maxes out at 42,000 pounds of payload. So the big two PFAL variant flunks the very airlift test that made HIMARS famous. Add two dozen rockets, roughly another 16,000 pounds, and you are staring at a 60-plus ton Colossus that needs rare C-17 slots, a roll-on ferry, or sea lift staging days in advance. Planners love the volume salvo, four times high Mars, one button push, but logisticians see choke points. Remote islands with combat-sized runways can host high Mars or the Army's lighter autonomous multi-domain launcher. 10 by 10 LVSR rig stays on the pier, burning diesel and screaming on infrared. That trade space is tightening budgets. Indo-Pacific war games now force commanders to choose. 
air portable six packs that can keep hopping, or super magazines that must roll off a ship and fight from wherever they land. The Pentagon's transport chiefs warn every extra ton is a day's delay, yet Congress has not funded a single rapid reload kit for the heavyweight truck. So the question lingers, will Pentagon purse strings backmast rockets that cannot always sprint or double down on lean launchers that fire fewer rounds but never sit still? The answer decides whether PFL becomes a global roamer or a pier side bruiser waiting for the first missile to fly. At Yuma Proving Ground, a driverless high mobility artillery rocket system rolled out of concealment, swung its turret under remote command, and rip fired six practice rockets. No soldiers on board. That robot truck is the Army's autonomous multi domain launcher, and its program chief openly credits three seed projects for the leap the autonomous transport vehicle system, secure mobile power, and the palletized field artillery launcher, whose DNA runs through the fire control box. Now the service is jumping from one-off demo to full fleet. On 27th of June, 2025, the Rapid Capabilities and Critical Technologies Office dropped a common autonomous multi-domain launcher, CAML solicitation. It wants two variants on a crash schedule, KMLH, on an M1075 palletized loading system, able to sling Tomahawks or PAC-3 interceptors, CMLM on an FMTV chassis, firing multiple launch rocket system pods or AIM-9X interceptors. Both must self-reload with robot resupply trucks and be air transportable. The request for proposals vows prototype shoot-offs 18 to 36 months after award. Roughly the same window Congress will decide whether PFAL's heavyweight magazine survives or gets zeroed. If lawmakers balk at containers that cannot sprint, the money and mission could slide straight into KML's autonomous launchers. But autonomy courts its own backlash. Every new line of code edges decision-making away from humans and toward algorithms. So the next budget hearing may hinge on one question. Will Capitol Hill back a robot that hides PFAL firepower under the hood or pull the plug before software holds the launch key? PFAL began as a shoestring demo, vanished from big army budgets, and resurfaced under Special Operations Command, funded from sources nobody will name. Now Lockheed's 24 rocket monster threatens to quadruple each salvo, while the Army's brand new common autonomous multi-domain launcher bids to take the same box of rockets idea driver-free by 2028. Meanwhile, Precision Strike Missile just cleared Milestone C on July 2nd, 2025, opening production lines for 400-kilometer rounds, and a 1,000-kilometer follow-on is already in prototype. If PFAL earns certification, a single crate on a fishing wharf could threaten ports half an ocean away. But every major power is racing the same playbook. Russia's Club K, China's new containerized sea defense combat system, and Iran's February 2024 container ship launch all prove the concept works, and swamp satellite target decks with billions of lookalike boxes. So choose your poison, air portable six packs that sprint, or heavyweight magazines that saturate, and perhaps invite a nervous first strike. And if Congress slams the purse shut on PFAL, autonomy takes the wheel anyway under CAML. Sound off below. Should the Pentagon bet on concealed mass firepower, even if it slows the getaway, or back nimble launchers that fire fewer rockets but never stop moving? Your comments may preview tomorrow's doctrine.